All regions of the U.S. are different. From New England's aggressive, rabid, and often violent obsession with their pro sports teams, or the Midwest having the audacity to call soda pop. Nothing even comes close to the grits eating, sweet tea, bless your heart South, where college football is king. Or maybe you've driven in the Deep South and realized that it takes 14 minutes to go three miles because drivers are just letting everyone in, and the Bostonian mass hole in you just wants to get from point A to point B without making friends on the highway. But for this, we're not just looking at the South, but the Deep South. The Deep South was first used to describe the subregion of states that were economically dependent on plantations, and thus, by default, slavery as well. For this list, we will define the Deep South as Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina. So what is it that makes them so different? Check this list out to find out what separates the Deep South from the Deep North, the accent. For some people, the charm and politeness of the southern accent is the backdrop to a romantic setting of an antebellum love story. But there's a southern accent, and there's a deep southern accent, or the famous drawl that many of us can do a botched imitation of. Many would argue that Louisiana is an accent all of its own with Cajun English, then there's African American vernacular English, and of course there's the upper class Savannah accent, which as Andy from The Office so eloquently explained, sounds as if you have molasses in your mouth. The biggest discussion you'll hear about the accents is distinguishing the southern drawl from the southern twang. To a northern or western ear, they may all sound the same, but if you are from Georgia, there is no mistaking a Georgian from a Mississippian. Vehicle merging. Seems silly that this gets its own category, but hear me out. It's been well documented that the best way to merge is with the zipper merge. If two lanes need to become one, the most efficient way to do this is for all the cars to maintain both lanes until the point of the merge, in which each car then takes turns, like a zipper, to enter the single lane. Sounds simple, right? Well, apparently this is not simple in the South. There have been so many times driving in the South where all the cars are in the left lane whilst the right lane is wide open for miles. But then, there it is. The electric sign that reads in all its electronic glory, MERGE FOUR MILES AHEAD! That one sign, completely and utterly ignorable in the rest of the country, sends drivers into a tizzy. And for any northerner that attempts to get into said right lane and bypass the traffic, hoping to get to the front and zipper merge, think again. Southerners have a system for dealing with this. Enter the truckers. Throughout the four-mile nightmare, an 18-wheeler will randomly appear in the right lane, not moving forward, but not quick to get over either. They are strategically placed there as a nuisance for New Yorkers to keep them from following basic engineering principles. Southern history. This should be pretty obvious. The South historically built its economy on agriculture, which included large plantations worked on by enslaved people. They seceded from the Union, joined the Confederacy, fought a war, lost a war, rejoined the Union, enacted Jim Crow laws and segregation. You get the picture. The Southern states have a sordid past. I spoke with a man from Louisiana recently. We're talking a 66-year-old man, to be exact. And he said he remembers the first time that he swam with black children. The South doesn't just have a unique long-ago history. It has a unique recent history. But it's not all bad. The Deep South was also home to the birth of the Civil Rights Movement. One may argue that the movement only came from the South because racism existed in the South, but if recent history has taught us anything, it's that racism is found in all 50 states, and thus it was the South that led the movement bringing social justice to the northern states as well. The Food Southern cuisine covers a broad, diverse range of dishes. What's popular in New Orleans may not even appear on a Georgia menu. But some foods are just so uniquely South that it needs to be mentioned on this list. Grits. If you are not from the South, you may have heard of grits but never seen them. It's a creamy cornmeal cooked like a porridge and slathered with butter. After watching Southerners chow down on grits at the local Waffle House, it can only be concluded that grits is an excuse to eat butter. Sweet tea is another one. If you order an iced tea anywhere else, they will typically ask if you want it sweet or unsweet. Not in the South. Assume that it's a glass of sugar with a drop of tea. Boiled peanuts are another marvel of the South. Originating in Africa, the delicacy was brought over by enslaved Africans and now finds itself in gas stations, truck stops, and local side-of-the-road vendors. Another wonder from Down Under is the fried food. Fried everything. Fried chicken on a stick, fried pickles, fried okra, fried green tomatoes, fried Oreos, and so on. They could all be a heart attack waiting to happen. Southerners love their greens. 
Turnip greens, collard greens, and mustard greens easily accompany a piece of fried chicken. Another compliment to fried chicken are waffles. You haven't really lived until you've had chicken and waffles. The religion. The Deep South is completely inside the Bible Belt, so it's no surprise that religion will be a way of life in the South. The dominant religion is Southern Baptist. In fact, Southern Baptists are the largest evangelical Protestant group in the United States. While most immigrants were flooding the Northeast, the South remained relatively homogenous in terms of religious diversity. Another denomination that has thrived in the South is the Methodist Church, most famously known for being pacifists. The religious revival movement known as the Second Great Awakening transformed America from the 1790s to the 1830s. Christianity was used as a weapon against enslaved people by using verses demanding that they remain compliant. On the other hand, Christianity thrived among enslaved people as a means of salvation from their captivity. The suppressed religions of the enslaved, like the Yoruba and other African traditions, endured through adaptation and blending with Christianity. The result is a church on every corner. Southern Fast Food and Restaurants Forget In-N-Out Burger and don't bother looking for a Jewish deli. The South is all about its Chick-fil-A and Waffle House. Hailing from Hapeville, Georgia in 1946, Chick-fil-A was originally called Dwarf Grill. It all started with a boneless chicken breast, breaded, seasoned, and served on a toasted, buttery bun with two pickle chips. Today, they still make the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich the same way. A mere 20 miles northeast of the first Chick-fil-A and nine short years later in 1955, Waffle House opened its doors for the first time. Waffle Houses are open 24 hours a day, and right up until the COVID pandemic, most Waffle Houses didn't even have a lock on their doors. If it never closes, it never locks. Another southern favorite comes from Louisiana and serves up fried chicken. That's Popeyes. It's the Deep South's answer to KFC. Popeyes is also good for biscuits and white gravy that has the consistency of concrete. Delicious. Mammy's Cupboard is its own category, one of the absolute weirdest things in all of the South. That's right, Mammy's Cupboard. It was founded in 1940 in Natchez, Mississippi to capitalize on the Mammy archetype that was made famous in Gone with the Wind. It still stands in 2023 despite its obvious offense. The restaurant stands at 28 feet tall and is in the shape of a Mammy caricature. Her large hoop skirt opens up into the dining room and gift shop. It took until 1979 for it to be considered an offensive eyesore, and it was going to be torn down. Instead, they painted the Mammy's skin lighter to avoid being such an obvious stereotype. Not sure if that helped any. So is it offensive or isn't it? Well, that depends on who you ask. The authors of Frommer's USA said that if you want to visit the restaurant, you need to check your political correctness at the door. That probably says it all. Regardless, the restaurant has become iconic and in some ways is a window into the Old South and a reminder of a life very different than anywhere else. What are your thoughts on Mammy's Cupboard? Whether you love it or hate it, it's definitely something that makes the Deep South different. The Sports Down South, it's all about college football. Not the NFL, not Major League Baseball, but college football with a little roll tide and hotty toddy. In fact, besides the Atlanta Braves, the rest of the Deep South doesn't even have a baseball team. College football isn't just a sport, a recreation, or a way for kids who play to avoid student loans. No, no, it's a religion. Saturdays are an all-day event, especially when tailgating in the Grove at Ole Miss. Forget the separation of church and state. When it comes to college football, winning leaves no stone unturned, even taking a knee to pray to the Almighty or plastering a locker room with posters quoting Ephesians. Now that we've explored the Deep South, if you want to hear about a complete opposite, click this image to learn more about the top 10 rudest cities in America.